இடத்த விட்டுட்டு வெளியில் போகிறதுன்னா இது வரைக்கும் நான் பார்த்தது வெளிச்சத்தை பார்த்ததில்லை இங்கே இந்த ஒரு ரூம் தான் இன்னும் இங்கே தான் நான் இருப்பேன் இங்கே தான் சாப்பிடுவேன் இங்கே தான் தூங்குவேன் எல்லாமே இதாக எனக்கு இதுக்கப்புறம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ரெண்டு நிமிஷம் வெளியில் கூட்டிகிட்டு போய் யாராவது வருவாங்க காமிப்பாங்க ஸோ நார்மலி வாட் த ட்ராஃபிக்கர்ஸ் டூ இஸ் யூ ஐ த கிட்னாப் ஓ யூ ஆக்சுவலி கோவர்ஸ் தம் ஓ யூ த்ரெட்டன் தம் டு ஒர்க் ஃபார் யூ யூ டேக் தம் டு அ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் லொக்கேஷன் வேர் தி கேன் எஸ்கேப் தி ஆர் நார்மலி ட்ரக்ட் பீட்டன் அப் அண்ட் நார்மலி ரேப்ட் இஸ் வெல் பி ஒன் பி டூ பி த்ரீ ஏ ஒன் A team from the Malaysian Police Force's anti-trafficking squad raided a karaoke pub on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. They've been tipped off there might be underage foreign girls offering sexual services there. The pub is connected by elevated walkways and staircases to adjacent lots and buildings. A warren of corridors leading to rooms quite clearly not used for singing and some customers keen to hide their identities they escape oh, okay. if the uh, enforcement officers would come and uh, read the place so you see they have a secret door in the adjoining buildings police round up the women euphemistically known as guest relations officers or GROs and their customers and bring them back to the karaoke pub The women working there are all foreign from Vietnam, China and Thailand. Officers check their passports and on this occasion on the surface at least it appears they are all 18 years or older. The men will be remanded to make statements to confirm they were offered sexual services. The women will all face being deported back to their homelands. Royal Mission Police, we find that uh, nowadays that uh, quite a number of uh, teenagers uh, aged 16 to 17 uh, coming in from Vietnam. Uh, they maybe come in voluntarily or maybe they uh, uh, you can say that they were tricked to come here. But there are girls at the, in this uh, group of age. uh they are being brought in to Malaysia to work as uh, GROs and uh, to work at the karaoke pubs even in instances such as this where all the women appear to be of age that might not be the case one of the gaps that we have one of the issues that we have is we know for a fact that children girls let's say for example are trafficked into the country for sexual exploitation but when they are arrested or there's a raid um the passports that the girls have are fake and the numbers show um and, and the the date of birth on the in the passport will say that she's over 18 she's 21 22 you'll never find anyone under 18 and then we find out and we go you know we manage to go back trace um her birth certificate in the philippines etc she's 15 um so we're knowing we know that there's been enough cases where it's repeated and this this kind of gap's been repeated over and over again where immigration doesn't work with the police etc they don't check the passports they assume that that's the date of birth and a large number of them are underage so we know it's happening Malaysia is a majority Muslim country conservative especially in matters relating to sex prostitution is illegal but it's rampant and not even particularly hidden It's found in cheap dives and five-star hotels, in massage parlors, health spas and karaoke pubs, in nightclubs, on the main shopping streets and in the dingy back alleys. Along this road you can see the girls is studying from here. Here. Okay. You can say that yes, prostitution is everywhere in KL. Although it's illegal but uh, it look like legal but underage girls both foreign and local are another story talked about rumored but deeper underground for my experience 6 years in a driving taxi i never go through by underage girls go do a sex work actually never We asked a man wired with a recording device to take a stroll along the main shopping street of Kuala Lumpur 
to see what he encountered. Within meters, a pimp approached him. Despite those claims and offers, it proved difficult to be able to meet with any sex workers we could confirm were in fact underage. It took several weeks of hanging around brothels and gaining the trust of pimps like this woman. She at first denied any knowledge of underage girls for hire, but later helped us to speak with three of them. The first two interviews were shot surreptitiously on a mobile phone. Can you? Me? Yes. Indonesia. How old are you? Me? 17. The first time you came here was when you were, how old you were? When you, the first time you came in, in Kuala Lumpur? 16. 15. Yeah. 15. How many you see in one night? Three, four? Five. Five in one night. Are they Malaysian? Malaysian. The customer? Oh. Or are they... Uh, Malaysia. Malaysia. America, Australia. Yeah. Your mother and father, they know? No. They don't know? Don't know. I work in restaurant. And then you send money? Yeah. Where are you from? Thailand. How old are you? 17. Yeah, why? How long are you in Malaysia? Two years and a half. If he have customer, he have to call my boss and then my boss send the girl for him. The and then also same. My boss have many brokers. They all contact customer and then call my boss. In one office, me have office and then many, many telephone there. He just answer the phone and then talk. Talking with my driver, go where, where hotel, go to see him, like that. Yeah, this is his system. If my boss say, okay, you go this hotel, this hotel, room number, you will go. And then customer see, okay, if you, if they like you, okay, you work in. And your parents, they don't know. They know. Okay. So you have a lot of of your customers and your friends. Yeah. Yes. But they know you're 17. Why? And then, because it's, it's not problem. I fuck a lot of Iranian here, you know. Yeah. Maybe more than 100, 200. Because two years I have, they all come to study here, working here, have business here, transit here, holiday here. Not about only one you. That's why they like to come Malaysia because Malaysia is very open. For you, when you when you show your passport, you give money. I don't go by airport. I come by bus. Because Malaysia and Hai is very near, they are good friends. That's why no problem about me. Yes. But, but I keep money, 100, they all give me one month. 100 mm. ringgit they know, is they know. so much. It's easy. Easy. Put in the in the passport and... Yeah, same like that. I born in poor family, that's why money is important about me. Just now only, if next future, I everything enough for me. I also don't want any more, right? But now it's very important work about my family, money, very important. Now, because my family have some problem, right? Even for those girls who are not coerced or forced to do it, the long-term psychological impact of underage sex work can be severe. You learn to internalize that the only thing that is valuable about me is my body. And that's what people want, and that's what I have to offer. So there is already a misappropriation with relationships itself. So sex is the tool in which I understand relationships work. So if I provide sex and my body, then I am having a relationship with someone. Uh, other cases, there will definitely be post-traumatic stress disorder, intense trauma as a result of these experience. This Indian girl from Tamil Nadu 
was tricked into coming here. She agreed to be interviewed. நடந்துச்சு <laughs> அப்படியே மயக்கமாக இருக்க மாதிரி இருந்துச்சு நிறைய பேர் வந்து பார்த்தாங்க என்னையை பார்த்துட்டு திடீர்னு ஒருத்தவங்க கூட வந்து என்னை உள்ளே அனுப்பிட்டு எல்லோரும் வெளியாயிட்டாங்க எல்லோரும் போனதுக்கப்புறம் அந்த ஆள் வந்துட்டு என்ன எங்கெங்கேயோ கை வச்சுட்டு என்னென்னவோ வந்து சித்திரவாதம் பண்ணான் எனக்கு வந்து என்ன பண்ணுறதுன்னு தெரியல எனக்கு என்னால் எதுவும் செய்யவும் முடியல அந்த நேரத்தில் எனக்கு என்ன பண்ணுறது ஒன்றும் தெரியல ஏன்னா எனக்கு என்ன நடந்துச்சுன்னு எனக்கு தெரியல நான் தண்ணி குடித்ததுக்கப்புறம் எனக்கு அரை நினைவு தான் இருந்தது மயக்கம் வந்த மாதிரி ஆகிடுச்சு அதுக்கப்புறம் பார்த்தா காலையில் விடிஞ்சு எந்திரிக்க முடியல என்னால் நான் எப்படி படுத்தனே தெரியாது என்னோடய ட்ரெஸ்ஸு எதுவுமே இல்லை எந்திரிச்சு காலையில் பார்த்தா இந்த மாதிரி இருந்தது ஷி சென்ஸ் ஷி ஹேஸ் டு சர்வீஸ் அஸ் மெனி அஸ் அ டசன் மேன் லைக் தீஸ் இன் அ சிங்கிள் நைட் or face the consequences adathu malaysia la irundhu varuvaanga vera naatungal la irundhu varuvaanga nariya per varuvaanga avangaloda vayasu 25 vayasu irukum 30 vayasu irukum 40 vayasu irukum 60 vayasu irukum indha vayasaloda na pova mudiyadhu ivangaloda na irukka mudiyadhu chitravada pannuvaanga adalla na inge ipdi pannadinga apdi pannadinga edhu solla mudiyadhu apdina adha sonna na avanga poittu indha china kitta solliduvaanga ava enna adichiruva adanalae என் எந்த கஷ்டமாக இருந்தாலும் நான் தாங்கிக்கிட்டே இங்கே தான் இருக்கணும் என்ன வயசாக இருந்தாலும் நான் ஒன்றும் பேச முடியாது அவங்க வந்து கஸ்டமரை வந்து இதை செய் அதை செய்ய இதை வந்து இப்படி பண்ணு அதை வந்து அப்படி பண்ணு நம்ம வந்து ஒரு பொம்மை மாதிரி நடத்துவாங்க லப்பர் மாதிரி நினச்சிப்பாங்க நம்மளே இந்த பக்கம் திரும்ப அந்த பக்கம் திரும்ப அப்படி சில பேர் வந்து பைத்தியம் மாதிரி டான்ஸ் ஆடு சில பேர் எல்லாத்தையும் கழட்டிட்டு ஆடுன்னுவாங்க சில பேர் இப்படி உட்கார் அப்படி உட்கார் இந்த பக்கம் திரும்ப அந்த பக்கம் திரும்ப அதை பிடிச்சி கடிப்பாங்க இதை பிடிச்சி கடிப்பாங்க முகமெல்லாம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா புளி புரண்டி வச்சா மாதிரி உடம்பெல்லாம் புரண்டி வச்சிருப்பாங்க அவங்களுக்கு அது ஒரு ஆனந்தமாக இருக்கும் வாட் ட்ரைவ்ஸ் மேன் டு டூ திஸ் டு சீக் அவுட் செக்ஸ் வித் கேர்ள்ஸ் தே நோ ஆர் அண்டர் ஏஜ் இட் வேரிஸ் அகார்டிங் டு கல்ச்சர் அண்ட் தஸ் பிலீவ் இன் சர்டன் கல்ச்சர்ஸ் தட் யூ நோ ஃபார் த மேன் ஹூ who believe if they have sex with younger and younger children is it benefits them in terms of longevity or health wise so it's there in in the in the system culturally in the society it could be also a power distribution the ability to control if the child is 5 years younger than you and under the age of 16 and men who visit those child for sex would be considered having pedophilic tendencies NGOs say underage sex work is seriously underreported in Malaysia especially when it comes to local children We're seeing a large number of children um who are um exposed and exploited um by um the sex industry um and it's particularly kids in um marginalized kids in in high risk areas and i'm actually seeing a growing number of children that we're seeing on the streets and it's actually getting harder to reach them because the syndicates and the gangs and the groups and stuff have already gotten to the kids so much faster so that they don't need so many things from us they don't need shelter they don't need food they don't need education they don't want to go to school and so because they have alternatives and the alternative is for a lot of them fast money partying um you know doing drugs um and then having a good time and then doing it repeatedly all over again so yeah it's a huge problem Sylvia Abdullah heads an NGO that assists sex workers in the low income inner city district of Chowkit எனக்கு தெரிஞ்ச வரைக்கும் அந்த சைல்டு செக்ஸ் ஒர்க்கர் வந்து ரொம்ப இருக்காங்க ஆனால் காட்டிக்க மாட்டுறாங்க ஏன்னா அவங்க வந்து 
இந்த செக்ஸ் ஒர்க்கர் தொழில் வந்து காசு மட்டும்னு வாங்கலை அவங்க மற்ற மற்றதும் வாங்குறாங்க அதாவது நல்ல உடுப்பு பிராண்டட்டு அந்த மாதிரி பார்க்குறாங்க ஏன் எனக்கு எனக்கு எப்படி தெரியும்னாக்கா நான் புக்கிமின் தாங்களை அவுரீச் பண்ணும்போது நான் ரெண்டு மூணு பிள்ளைங்களை பார்த்துருக்கேன் ஸ்கூல் உடுப்பு போட்டு வந்துட்டு டாய்லெட்டில் கழட்டி மாற்றிடுவாங்க உடுப்பை மாற்றிட்டு வெளியாகுவாங்க வெளியாகிட்டு அந்த எந்த ஏரியாமல் அந்த கிளாப்ஸ் கிளாப்ஸ் எல்லாம் இருக்குதுல அந்த மாதிரி இடத்துல போயிட்டு உட்காருவாங்க ஆனால் அந்த கிளாப்ஸ் உள்ளுக்கு போட மாட்டாங்க ரெஸ்டாரண்டில் உட்காருவாங்க அதாவது அந்த என்ன சொல்லுவாங்க என்ன ரெஸ்டாரண்ட்ஸ் புஃபே அந்த மாதிரிலாம் இருக்குது இல்லை அந்த மாதிரி ரெஸ்டாரண்ட் கிட்ட போய் உட்காந்துட்டு அங்கே பேசி இப்படியே பேசிக்கிட்டே இருப்பாங்க ஒரு ஆள் வந்து கேட்பாங்க For many though there appears to be no element of choice instead they are victims of coercion bordering on outright slavery as umila das knows too well she works with girls who were victims of child trafficking and told us about special centers where the girls are kept after being rescued these shelters are run by the ministry of women and uh, they are protected by you know police and uh, guards and stuff and it's in a secret location uh, to protect the victims so you have shelter staff who actually uh, used to work with the ministry of women in putrajaya who now work in these shelters and uh, you have children from all backgrounds uh, starting from uh, a child who might be about 20 days old right up to a teenager about 17 years old because once they reach 18 they are already deemed adults and they are sent to the women shelter on the other side the malaysian children who are already there in the shelter cannot leave the shelter for 2 years um when i asked why that was uh, according to the government uh, they say that it's for the child's protection because the traffickers are still out there and sometimes you might get the trafficker but their associates might be around that was the reason why das has heard first hand horrific accounts that reveal the depth of the problem and the impact on the victims a girl from nagri sambilan 13 years old she was uh, kidnapped by two indian men okay and uh, she was taken to a location that she could not identify and uh, where she was drugged raped and beaten up so for the next 2 years she was forced into prostitution and she couldn't actually tell us the location of this place but in that 2 years she tried her best to escape and uh, through the help of an indonesian woman also being trafficked she actually managed to run out of the place and she ran out but the traffickers found her so uh, they found her and, and you know they needed to teach her a lesson and all the other children and women you know uh, in the captivity so they beat her up with a um, metal rod breaking a lot of her bones and her body was just left on the side of the road and i think somebody tipped off the police and the police actually took her to the hospital where she spent the next 6 uh, to 9 months getting mended because she was in a coma and uh, she needed to you know rewire her jaw get her legs fixed because you know most of the bones were already broken but this girl survived and she is in the shelter right now even where the abuse has been less extreme the impact on underage girls of working in the sex trade can be profound and long lasting they become rebellious one and number two they can actually um, present with the depression and anxiety post traumatic stress so there's a whole array of mental illness there and of course the big one is the personality disorder that forms because it's like you know a, a critical time in the development of a child and you know this abuse and uh, trafficking has happened while they were forming so Um, these are the challenges that i face with them it's a repetitive cycle and you're stuck most of the time because there's no way out because the environment breeds that you know and if you go out and you leave and nobody wants to accept you as a result of either your child sex worker or you've been raped or you've been abused and there are no avenues for you to go out. so what do you do you need to survive you need to eat so what do you do and how do you eat you know okay i've got my body if i sell it i'm going to get x amount of dollars and that's how i can survive so the cycle is vicious and it's very difficult to step out of the cycle if there are no avenues for it and while all sex workers are at risk of hiv and aids the risks are worse for those who are under age yo avangaloda safety e paapangala illa mattavangaloda safety e paapangala avanga kaasu dhaan paakranga 
சேஃப்டியை பார்க்கறதில்ல அதே சமயம் நம்ம என்ன சொல்கிறோம்னாக்கா எப்படி இந்த நாட்டில் வந்து ஹெச்ஐவி எய்ட்ஸை வந்து குறைக்கிறதுக்கு பார்க்குறோம் ஆனால் பார்க்க போனால் இந்த மாதிரி பிள்ளைங்களுக்கு யார் எஜுகேஷன் பண்ணுறா யாருமே இல்லை இந்த கவர்மெண்ட் எஜுகேஷன் பண்ண மாட்டாங்க NGOs are looking to work more closely with the authorities to tackle the child sex trade. There's a trust issue. I mean, I think it's 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 a long time coming. I think we did, we just had our first meeting and I've been doing this work for what, 6 years. Um we just had our first meeting. Um and there's there's a promise to promise to work together, which is good. Um but we'll see how long that goes. Um we have been invited by, you know, um the national council on trafficking anti trafficking to come and speak and to present our cases to show the documented cases that we have that they don't have so there is um an agreement that we will work, be working together it's slow but it's going there i wish it just move faster that's all i guess the first aspect is to recognize that is a problem we are in a perpetual state of denial how you know so if you deny the problem there's no way to, to deal with it so the entire dynamics of it needs to change if it doesn't then we're going to tr- tackle the problem at a symptomatic level so at the end of the day we become a very reactive society this happens i'll do this this happens i'll do this but you're not looking at what contributes to it what happens i'm good 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 person that's why i hope i see everything is good come back to me i never do bad that's why ngerndu வெளியில் போனால் எனக்கும் ஆசையாக தான் இருக்குது யாராவது வந்து என்னை விடுதலை பண்ணாதான் உண்டு இங்கே இங்கேருந்து நான் வெளியில் போனோம் ஆசைப்பட்றேன் கடவுள் தான் அதுக்கு